Glory to God. Glory to God. God bless you, family. Thank you for joining Faith Talk and Miracle Moments with Bishop O. Olafe. There is a miracle with your name on it. Thank you. Don't thank you. Thank you. Thank you. As you're coming in, I wanted to kindly share this broadcast and bring more people on. I have a word from God. I'll be speaking to you today from the heart of God. God has a word for you. God has a miracle with your name on it. So I want you to love it and share it. Let me know where you're watching from. Let me know where you're watching from. This is Faith Talk and Miracle Moment. Glory to God. Yes, welcome. Welcome, 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 welcome. Thank you, Jesus. Let's get this going. Okay. Yes, don't watch alone. I want you to share the broadcast. I want you to share it, love it, share it, like it, bring more people on. I'm trying to do the same. Let me know where you're watching from. God bless you. Let me know where you're watching from. Yes. This is Faith Talk and Miracle Moment. I'm going to be sharing with you something very powerful. I'm just taking time out to share this broadcast right here. And I want you to do the same. By the click of a button, you can help change somebody's life today. You can bring somebody into a realm of miracles, signs, and wonders. And they will never, for, they will remind you, they will remember you, they will never forget you when you do that. Yes. Okay. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, I'm live on um, my Facebook profile page. I'm also live on HOD um, radio. I'm live also on Periscope and Twitter. So let me know where you're watching from. This is Faith Talk and Miracle Moments with Bishop O. Olafe. I want you to know that God has a miracle with your name on it. As I wait for you to share this broadcast, I want to encourage you to get my book. And the good news is that we have a brand new uh, website. If you visit our website, hoffan.org, uh, let me look for that information right now. Uh, you're going to be able to get all these books. My books are live there on hoffan.org and... Um, amazon.com so let me put that for you right now get my books get my books on hoffan.org uh seven ideas that can revolutionize your life i'm waiting for you to share this broadcast let me know where you're watching from i'm going to be talking to you today a very powerful word from god that god has put in my hand my heart i beg your pardon that will change your life glory be to god look at this um Prayers that work wonder for increase. You can get all these books on Amazon.com or on our website, hoffan.org. And we have a brand new website, easy to navigate. Uh, you're going to be able to easily assess all these materials. Um, God will fix it. God will fix it. It's available there. Healing is the children's bread. Healing is the children's bread. Powerful book, life changer. Yes, let me know where you're watching from. I want to see you. I'm live on... Um, HOD Radio, I'm also live on um, my profile page. I'm also live on Twitter. So let me know where you're watching from. Uh, prayers that open up the mind for creativity. I'm going to recognize you when I see you in a minute. And of course, this powerful book, Go Forward, Go Forward. There are lots of books you can get on that website. When you go there, look for the books. I have lots of nuggets and powerful life-changing materials. So go to uh, hoffan.org or go to amazon.com uh, slash bishop olawali olafe you're going to find the books there they're going to be a blessing to you what are we going to be talking about today i want to talk about the election of god the election of god god uh, the elect of god and the benefits god also uh you know we are in you know uh we are in a very strange and very powerful time god is also uh involved in elections and i started this uh broadcast last week i will encourage you to uh look at my previous broadcast i'm talking to you about the elect of god 
and the benefit of God's election. God is also electing people uh, into a position of, of uh, into position of influence and power. And God has his own elect. And I share with you last week that God has elected you. Yes, you are thinking of electing somebody, but the good news is that God is electing people around the world. Election means people being put in a position of influence or position of authority. And God also has his own election. So I'm going to talk to you today about the elect of God and the benefit of the election, the benefit of the election of God in a person's life. So let me know where you're watching from. Let me respond to, I I mean, I see here, all right? I want to see you. I want to know where you're watching from. So let me know uh, where you're watching from. This is Bishop O. Olafe with Faith Talk and Miracle Moment. There is a miracle with your name on it. And I'm going to share with you today the benefit of God's election. God has elected you. You know, I shared that with you last week. And I and I, I said to, I, I, I made you to realize that God also is electing people. And you might be wondering, who has God elected? The good news is that you are the elect of God. You are the elect of God. God has elected you. Oh, yes. God chose you. An election is a choice, a choice that a person has a right to make. And when somebody is chosen, the person is put in the place of, uh, in a position of influence or power. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Let me get rid of this. All right. So, but the good news is that God has made his own choice and you you yes you are the choice of god you are the one that god has elected he has elected you for a reason to put you in a place of influence and in a place of power and i'm going to share with you the benefit of god's election today so let me pray father in the name of jesus i thank you for this moment i pray that this will be a life transforming moment for this person watching right now. Let this person's life be changed, transformed, empowered in the name of Jesus. Do something supernatural. Let the revelation of your word that is going to go forth right now bring supernatural illumination, revelation, and insight for this person that will bring about the change of life and the change of story of this person watching me right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. I give you praise and I call it done in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Glory be to God. So I'm going to share with you today very powerfully that you are God's elect and what is the benefit of God choosing you. An election is a choice and God has chosen you. You might think you don't merit God's choice. Uh, Let me even say this. The election of God is an election of grace. God chooses people by his grace. In fact, not because of what we have done, but because of his grace, his goodness. And God has chosen you to, you know, release his favor into your life. God has elected you. You know, a whole lot of people might not have chosen you, but the good news is that God has chosen you. In fact, you might not even have, you know, uh, believe that you are qualified to be elected into anything, but the good news is that God has chosen you, and God has chosen you to bring you to a place of influence, power, and authority. God wants to do something great with your life. So today I'm going to share with you uh, why you need to know your election of God, why you need to embrace God's election of you and why God chose you for this, uh, why God decided to make you his choice in this election. Glory be to God. Uh, So that's what we're going to look at today. We're going to look at the election of God, the elect of God, and the benefits of that uh, election. 
I want you to I want to encourage you as we get into this world to subscribe to my my page, subscribe to my YouTube channel if you have not done so yet. Subscribe if you are watching me right now. If, if you are watching me on Facebook, you can subscribe. You can like my Facebook page, and also you can subscribe to my YouTube channel. Glory be to God. And I want to encourage you to um, subscribe to my my YouTube channel. That is Household of Faith for All Nations. I I come every Tuesday to bring you this word. Uh, now 2:30 p.m. Uh, Eastern and yeah 2:30 p.m. Eastern now because of the change of time and also 8:30 p.m. GMT. So every Tuesday I'm on live on this uh, Faith Talk and Miracle Moment. So if you subscribe, you'll be notified every time I come on. You'll be notified so you can be you can receive the word of God for you. Glory be to God. So I want you to subscribe and like this page. I'm I'm talking to you today about God's election and that you are God's elect. Why has God, this is what we're looking at today. Why has God elected you? The divine manifesto. That's what we want to look at today. Why has God elected you? Why are you God's elect? Why did God choose you? And what did he choose you for? You know, when a person, you know, um, is contesting, you know, for a position of election, um he, he declares his manifest manifesto that means the things he intend to accomplish when he gets into that office the thing he tends to do in the life of the people who are going to elect him and god also by choosing you god has some things that he intends to do in your life in my life because God is choosing people around the world. The Bible says God is choosing people around the world. And if you are hearing this message today, if you are hearing this word, that's the good news. It means you are hearing this message because God has chosen you. It's not a coincidence that you are hearing this message. It's because God has elected you. And I spoke about that in my uh, previous broadcast. And I will encourage you to get that uh, teaching, to, to listen to it, to know that, what, that God has elected you. And your election is an election of grace. So today, I want to share with you some benefits, that, some benefit that God has in mind for you when he elected you. The reason why this is important is that if you know the benefit, if you know why God chose you, you can begin to expect God to perform his promises, the intention in your life. And once you begin to, once I begin to outline these benefits to you, they will gladden your heart. You'll be so glad, you'll be so excited that God has chosen you and you're going to open up your heart. It, you, it will enable you to open up your heart to get ready for what God is said to do for you. So let's get to it. I think I gave you, I shared two of those benefits um, last week. I'll just mention those ones and I will not uh, major on them so I can move forward into the benefits that will accrue to you because God has chosen you. This is the divine manifesto. And in case you have not you know, responded to God's choice, of you, if you have not accepted God's choice, if you have not accepted or opened up yourself to be uh, to be a partaker of what why God has chosen you, this might influence you and encourage you so that you can open up and allow God to perform for you why He the reason He chose you for, so that He can do in your life the things He intended to do when He chose you because. You know, when a person, uh, when a person is elected into a position, or when a person is, you know, attempting to be elected into a position, the person gives his manifesto. Those are his intentions, what he intends to do. But the good news is that God also has revealed His purpose for choosing you and I. And so we're going to look at why God chose you. Number one reason. God elected you to give you 
eternal life. Eternal life. Eternal life means the God kind of life. Everlasting life. That's the God life. You see, uh, the life of God is different from the human life. There is the human life and there is the there is the God life. The God life is a superior life. The God life is a better life. In fact, the Bible says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whosoever believes in him, whosoever become God's choice, the person that believes is the person that has uh, accepted or yielded himself to God as one whom God has chosen. He said he shall have everlasting life. That means he's going to have eternal life. What is that life? That is the same life that Jesus had. That is the life that Jesus lived. And that's a miracle life. That's an abundant life. That's a victorious life. It's different from the human life. So the, the first reason God chose you is he elected you to give you his own kind of life. And I pray that you're going to experience that life in the name of Jesus. And I said, I'm just going to mention that because I talked about it in my last broadcast. The second reason God chose you, which I also spoke about in my last broadcast, is so that you won't perish. God is not willing that you perish. There is, you know, if you live this life and you don't live, if you don't accept the gift of God to you, then there is every tendency that when your time is over on this earth, you could perish. But God doesn't want you to perish because the Bible says all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But God, and the Bible says the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. That's the God life. That's the life that will you know, prevent you from perishing. The, in fact, in John chapter 3, verse 16, it said, God so loved the world, he gave his only son, that whosoever believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So God does not want you to perish. So he has elected you to, uh, so to prevent you from perishing, from perishing. So that's the second reason, and I talk and I talked about that also in my previous broadcast. But I just want to mention it so I can go forward. Um, let's move forward so I can get I can start where I want to start today. I'm sharing with you why God has elected you. Why God has elected you? God's intention. This is the divine manifesto. I'm speaking to you so you can know that number one, you are God elect, and number two, you can know why God elected you. Uh, so the third reason, uh, which is the first reason we're going to major on today, is that God elected you to keep you from being destroyed by the devil. Oh, yes. There is God and there is the devil. In John chapter 10, verse 10, we are told in the Bible that the, the devil, the thief, the devil is a thief. He has come to steal, to kill, and to destroy. That's the ministry of the devil. He comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. He wants to destroy your life. He wants to steal, uh, your, steal your destiny. He wants to rob you of the glorious destiny that God has for you when God created you. That's the ministry of the devil. He has come to steal and he wants to kill you. You know, I mean, to kill means to, to, to make you to be separated, to lose the life of God. And that's the first thing I said to you, the eternal life. Death is separation. Separation, not just from the physical body, but separation from God. That's what death is. So the devil has come to steal, to kill and to destroy. He wants to kill. He wants to steal from you. He wants to steal your glorious destiny, your future, your goals, your dreams, your aspiration. He wants to abort your dreams. He doesn't want you to fulfill the destiny, the glorious plan that God has for your life. So God elected you to shield you, to keep you 
from being destroyed by the destroyer. So that's the third reason, and that's the first reason today, why God elected you, so that his plan and his purposes for your life can be fulfilled, so that the plan of the devil concerning you cannot come to pass, so that the destructive plan of the devil against your life, against your dreams, against your goal, against your vision, cannot be destroyed. So that's the second uh, the third reason why God elected you and is the first in this teaching today. Glory be to God. So that's, I'm going to go on to the next, because I want to be able to share with you. And this uh, divine manifesto will encourage you or it should inspire you or influence you to open up your heart so you can partake of this uh, blessings or this intention of God. You know, sometimes we blame God for everything that happens in our life. But if you don't know that God has a plan to shield you, protect you, and keep the enemy away from your life and help you to fulfill your destiny, then you might not be able to enjoy the blessings of God. So by you knowing, that's why I'm speaking this word to you, by you knowing that God elected you to protect you, you can take cover. You can take cover under the protective arm of God. You can allow him to reign and to rule in your life. As long as God is reigning and ruling in your life, you're going to be shielded. You're going to be protected from the destructive power of the enemy. And that's why God elected you to keep you from being destroyed from the devil to keep you. Look at um, the next reason here, why God elected you. God elected you so that you can live and enjoy life in the now and also in the life to come. <laughs> That's a mouthful. I will say it again. God elected you so that you can live and enjoy life in the now and in the life to come. You see, there is the life which we now live, your present life, and there is another life to come. So God elected you so that you can enjoy life in the now, and also secure you so that you can enjoy life in the, in the aftermath. You know, I don't know, but I'm sure you have noticed that people die. People don't live forever. People die. A time will come when you, when you, when you, when whatever you are doing on earth, it will be over. So, but God elected you so that you can live life in, enjoy life in the now. You know, there are people who are living for only now. In fact, uh, Apostle Paul was writing in scripture. He said, if only in this life we have hope, then we have all men most miserable. If, if your life, if you're only going to enjoy life in the now and not have a guaranteed eternity, you know, sometimes a whole lot of, a whole lot of people have never thought about where they're going to spend eternity, but God is concerned about that because God, you know, God knows all things and God is the one that has, you know, created you and he doesn't want you to be in eternity without him, because it's either you're going to spend uh, eternity with God or eternity without God. In Daniel chapter 2, I wish I could read all this scripture to you. The Bible says, and I want to read that, Daniel chapter 12, I beg your pardon, and verse number 2. Look at what the Bible says here. It says, and many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake. So everybody, every dead person, <laughs> is alive somewhere. Every dead person is alive somewhere. But where are they? That's the question. And the day you also die, I pray you live a long life and you live very long. And that's God's plan also for you so that you can live a very long life. God wants you to live life and enjoy it to the full and to live a long life. But no matter how long it is, you, you're going to depart this earth. Every, everybody, it's, it's, you know, it's appointed to man. All people, 
It, there's an appointment that everybody's going to keep, an appointment of death. Nobody knows the time or the hour, and we pray that it's long for everybody. But the question is, the day you sleep and don't wake up, where are you going to spend eternity? So God chose you or God elected you to secure, to help you to enjoy life in the now and also to help you secure your eternity so that you will spend eternity in hell uh, without God. This is what the Bible says here. It says, uh, Daniel chapter number 12 and verse 2. Yes, the Bible. The Bible says, and many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake some to everlasting life and some to shame and everlasting content. So you see that everybody that dies is going to wake up. Is going to wake up when they die. But some will have everlasting life, the life of God. They will spend their eternity with God in heaven. And some will spend their eternity without God in hell, in a place of uh, uh, torment, everlasting content and shame. And that's not what God wants for you. So God elected you so that you can live your life in the now. You can enjoy your life in the now and also secure your eternity so that you can spend your eternity in heaven with God. You know, if you look at the scripture in Luke chapter 16, from verse 19 to 31, Jesus was giving a parable at a time and Jesus was talking about, you know, two people who died, you know, and he said, uh, a rich man and a poor man, you know, so we can see what I'm saying to you here. On earth, one was rich, the other was poor. But God's plan is that every one of us be rich on this earth. Yeah, God wants you to reach, to be rich. That means to have uh, everything that life has to offer and to have it in abundance. God is not against that. God wants you to enjoy life. He wants you to have, you know, sufficiency and to, have, to be provided for in this life. So the Bible says the rich man died, the poor man also died. But what was common to every what was common to them, which is also common to everybody, uh, is that everybody's going to die. But the question is, when the, the Bible says when they died, the rich man found himself in hell, not because he was rich. He, he, he found himself in hell. That's what I want you to major on. And the poor man found himself in heaven. And he didn't find himself in heaven because he was poor. No, that's not what... The, I'm, I'm talking about he found himself uh, the one who found himself in hell found himself in hell because he didn't you know receive the gift of salvation that God gave to him he didn't receive the the love of God he didn't accept the the salvation that God offered him but the poor man even though he was poor he accepted the salvation that God has for him so, but what I'm saying to you today is that God elected you so that you can enjoy life in the now and also in the life to come. In fact, Jesus said it very powerfully in John chapter 5, verse 24. He said, those who receive this gift, verily I say unto you, he that hears my word and believeth on him that sent me has everlasting life, John 5, 24 and shall not come into condemnation. That's the beauty of God electing you, so that you will not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. You see that? You, are, you, 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 are, you can be passed. You can be passed from death to life, a person. So once God elected you, and that's the goodness of God. I think we should take a, a praise break there. That God is a good God. In fact, the Bible says God is not willing that any should perish at all. God does not want you to perish. In fact, that was why God gave his son Jesus. In fact, I think I said it last week. I said the death of Jesus on the cross. It was God's uh, protest. In fact, if you want to call it God's rally, it was God's open demonstration of his love for you and me. When Jesus came to die, when Jesus died on the cross, that was God expressing his love, his, his intention for you and I. So Jesus on the cross 
was a protest. That is God saying, look, this is how much I love you and this is how much I care for you. And he demonstrated it by giving Jesus to die on the cross for you. So he that when you believe Jesus, when you accept Jesus Christ, you will spend eternity with God in heaven and you will not go to hell. And that's the beauty of it. Let me give you the next reason why God elected you. God elected you to make you a member of his family. Oh, that is beautiful. God elected you to make you a member of his family. Yes, you know, once you accept Jesus Christ into your heart as your Lord and personal Savior, you're going to become a child of God. You're going to become a child of God. In fact, that's what we refer to as being born again, you know, in the kingdom of God. You're going to be born again, not of flesh and, and of blood, but of God and of the will of God. So once you do that, you become a member of God's family. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 2, very powerful. And I mean, I just like to read this some of these scriptures so that you can hear you can hear it, you know, not just my own opinion. He said, Now therefore, when you accept Jesus Christ, you are no more a stranger and foreigner, but you become a fellow citizen with the saints and member of God's household. So God elected you so that you can become a member of his family. You know, there are people who don't know, you know, where they belong. They don't know, you know, uh, where they belong, whether, whether they are God's slave or God's servant. But once you, once you are elected of God and you accept God's election, once you receive the gift of God, that God has elected you and chosen you, you're going to become a member of his family. You're going to be adopted into God's family. You're going to become a child of God. And that's what God wants to do for you. God wants you to become his own very child, either son or daughter, that you can call God your father. That's the beauty of God's election of you, so that you can become God's son or daughter. Glory be to God. In case you are just joining me, this is Faith Talk and Miracle Moment with Bishop O. Olafe. And you can always reach, you can reach out to me if you have um, if you have a question, you have a prayer request, uh, you want me to pray with you about, you can always reach me. Let me put up the information there. You can, um, thank you, Father. Watch this. You can email me. Yes, you can email me, you can inbox me, you can always reach me if you have a question or if you have a prayer request, you can text me or you can inbox me and I'll be glad to hear from you. Let me know how this word is blessing you. I'm speaking to you today on God's election, the elect of God and the benefit, you know, uh, the benefit of God, the election of God, the effect this is it now, the elect of God and the benefit. That's what we're looking at. In case you are just joining me, thank you for watching. Um, if you have not shared this broadcast yet, I want you to share it. And I want you to, um, you know, subscribe to my YouTube page or like my Facebook page, you know, and so that anytime I come on, you can always be a part of this broadcast. So I'm sharing with you why God, the election of God, you are the elect of God and the benefit that accrued to you because God has elected you. What is the effect of the election of God for your life? Glory be to God. So let's continue uh, in the teaching right now. The next reason why God has chosen you, God elected you to make you special. <laughs> yes, I like that. God elected you so as to make you special, to make you unique to bring you to a unique uh, place in life. Yes, extra to give you an extraordinary life. So God elected you to make you special. He wants to specialize you. He wants your life to become special, to become unique, you know, uh, greater and better than anything you currently, your life may currently be like. God wants to make you special. That means to make you exceptional to bring you to a different a different realm of living. Yes, 
That means to give you an uncommon life. That's why God elected you, to give you an unusual life. So he elected you to make you special. <laughs> and I see your life becoming special. That means exceptional. It be, your life is becoming better, greater than whatever it is right now. That's why God elected you. Glory be to God. I'm sharing with you. I'm letting you know that you are the elect of God. And I'm sharing with you the divine manifesto. This is why you need to uh, embrace this election of God. The Bible says, know your election of God. Know it so that you can, you know, uh, see God as responsible for your life. So you can allow God to do what he wants to do. So you can allow him to make you special in your life. So he elected you. I'm only giving you reasons now from God's word because God has declared his manifesto. He has made, you know, public the reason for our election. He elected you. He elected me. But the reason he elected you, among many other reasons, is to make you special, to make your life better, greater. So he elected you to make your life special. And I pray that your life will become special. It will become an uncommon life, an unusual life, you know, an extraordinary life. That's the reason God has elected you. Let me let me go ahead. I'm cataloging to you because there's so much reason there uh, that God has, why God elected you. And that's what God wants to do in your life. If you will let him, if you will let him, do what he wants to do in your life. God elected you for his glory. Oh, I love that. God elected you to reflect his glory. What does that mean? So that the beauty of God can be seen in your life. So you can be a display, you know, of the beauty of the magnificent of God so that God can express his beauty through your life. So that when people see you, they can see the glory of God. I think uh, it was Solomon. Solo, King Solomon in the Bible, you know, uh, who, who was elected of God because Solomon was God's elect. God chose him to be the king of Israel. In fact, there are many people, in fact, his, his siblings who wanted to be king, you know, uh, they, they want, many of them wanted to be king because there's always a benefit in election. But Solomon was God elect. And when Solomon was elected by God, the Bible says the glory of God was so much on the life of Solomon, such that another, pro, another queen came from another country who was a Sheba. The Bible says when she saw the glory of God on the life of Solomon and everything that pertains to Solomon, she passed out. She fainted. Because God has beautified his life. God has glorified him. And that's what God wants to do in your life. God wants to bring beauty into your life. God wants to bring glory into your life. So God, God elected you to make your life to reflect his glory. I'm sharing with you God's divine manifesto because you are God's elect. And I'm showing you the reason why God chose you as is revealed in the scriptures so that you can allow God to do what he wants to do with your life. God didn't elect you to hurt you. He didn't elect you to destroy you. He elected you to reflect his glory. And in case you have not responded to God's election, this might be, this is a good time for you to do that so that the beauty of God can be seen in your life. I will go on because I have God has shown to me many reasons, and I'm sharing with you. This is also very powerful. The next reason God elected you is so that he can perfect all that pertains to you. Glory be to God. He can perfect everything that concerns you. That means he can make your life to have all the right qualities or the right elements, right characteristics. He can make your life possess make it as good as possible. So he chose you, and I love that. Isn't that amazing that God chose you to make your life, 
to be as good as possible. That is what it means to perfect everything that pertains to you, whether it's your career, whether it's your health, whether it's your job, whether it's your business, whether it's your family. God wants to perfect. He wants to make everything about your life to be as good as possible. That's why he elected you. In fact, you will notice that even in human election, when people elect somebody to a place of position, they are hoping that that person that is elected will come and bring you know, perfection to their issues and circumstances. But God elected you so that he can perfect all that pertains to you. Would you allow God to perfect everything that pertains to you? That's why you should be happy that you are God's elect. God has elected you. If you are hearing this message, is if you are hearing this good news, is because you are God's elect. If God has not chosen you, you wouldn't have heard this word. So you are saying, how am I sure that I'm God's elect? Because you are hearing this message. He said, our message came to you because you are God's elect. That's how God you know, chooses his people by speaking to them, by sending a messenger to them. I'm God's messenger just speaking to you why God has elected you. Number, the next reason, and I'm not taking count, you can count it so much, I mean, here. God elected you so that he can make all things work together for your good. Oh, I love that again. The Bible says all things work together for the good of them that love God. To them who are the called, the elected according to his purpose. All things. So God elected you so that all things can work together for your good. Even the bad things. Even the difficult situation. Once you accept or you embrace your election of God, all things will begin to work together for your good. You know, even what the enemy meant for evil, God will make it work together for your good when you are God's elect, when you embrace your election of God. You know, I remember uh, the story of Joseph. The Bible talked about a young man in scripture called Joseph. His brothers conspired against him and they sold him to slavery because he had a dream and they were afraid of his dream they, they, because his dream, you know, put him in a place of elevation and they, is, they, he saw them bowing down to him in his dream. So they conspired against him. They wanted to abort his dream. They became uh, the devil's instrument against Joseph. I told you one of the reasons God elects you is to, to keep you from the destruction of the destroyer. And that's what the devil does. He has come to steal, to kill, and to destroy. And he can you he can function through human uh, agents. He can function through uh, natural elements of the world. And he can also he can function. He can use many things. So, this, but in the case of Joseph, the devil used his brothers, and they sold him. The, their goal was to abort his dreams. Their goal was to ensure that his dream would not be fulfilled. So they, they sold him. But the Bible says God, because he was God's elect, he said God was with him. God was with him and God made everything that he did to prosper. That's why I'm saying to you that once you are God elect, God elects people to make all things work together for the good of those whom he elects. It's not everybody that things work together for good for, but for the elect of God. All things will work together for the good of those whom God has elected. So as you embrace your election of God, as you know your election of God, this is one dividend, one benefit that will accrue to your life. You can say, no matter what circumstance you might, you might be in, no matter what situation you might be in, you might have this confidence that all things will work together for your good, that even the bad things, even the your mistakes, even whatever it is, it will work together for your good because God has elected you to make all things work together for good. In fact, Joseph rounded up his testimony after his dreams uh, came to pass. His brothers actually came and they bowed down to him and they became afraid and they thought that Joseph was going to uh, take vengeance on them. But Joseph said something. He said, you meant it for evil. But God turned it for good. So I'm speaking to you today that God elected you so that everything that pertains to you, 
will work together everything so that he can make all things work together for good in your life the good the bad the ugly the unpleasant even your mistakes will work together for your good and i see that happening for you in the name of jesus christ let me proceed and show you the next reason why god elected you and you and this is faith talk and miracle moments with bishop oh Olaf. let me know how this word is blessing you you can you can email me you can text me uh you can reach out to me and let me know how this word is blessing you uh thank you father so i'm going to show you the next uh reason now why god elected you the next reason why god elected you uh god elected you let's go ahead this is it now where are we okay thank you jesus god elected you so that he can bless you god elected you to bless you. And I love this particular uh, scripture. It said, God, having raised Jesus from the dead, sent him to bless you. What is the meaning of blessing? It means to invoke divine favor upon your life. So God elected you so that he can release his favor, his goodness into your life, into your situation. He elected you to empower you to succeed. He elected you to empower you to become victorious in your life. So God elected you to bless you. Yes, that's what it means to invoke the blessings of God, to release his blessing into your life. God elected you to invoke his blessing into your life. That's very powerful. And I see that blessing beginning to speak for you beginning to speak in your life that's the beauty once you receive you know uh, god's election once you accept god's election of you once you recognize and you you open up yourself there are benefits that are going to accrue to your life and that's why i'm sharing with you why god has elected you let me go to the next reason here and i see the blessings of god the favor of god invoked in your life the next reason god elected you is to shield you from the effect of curses on the earth. Oh, I love that. He elected you to shield you from the effect of curses on the earth. You see, this earth has blessings and this earth has curses. But God chose you to shield you from the curses and to open you up to the blessing. Yeah, the curses came into this world when the first man that God created, Adam, disobeyed God, he opened the door for causes, the flood of causes, the cause of the law, cause of man, all kinds of causes to come. But God elected you to shield you from the cause of the earth. In fact, the Bible says in that Galatians 3.13, it said, Christ has redeemed us from the cause of the law, be made a cause for us. For it is written that cursed is everyone that hangeth on the tree. So Jesus came to die on the cross so that you, the curses that were meant for you, can be canceled out on that cross. That means God crossed it out. He, co he crossed out the curses. So once you become God's elect, you're going to be shielded from the curses. Then what will happen? You're going to be opened up to the blessings of Abraham. That's the next thing. You become a partaker of the blessings of Abraham through Christ Jesus. So God elected you to shield you from the cause and to enter you or to make you and I a partaker of the blessing. So once you embrace your election of God, the Bible says you should know your election. You should know why God chose you. And that's why I'm speaking to you today. Know why God elected you so that I can open up your heart so that you can partake of the blessings of Abraham in through Jesus Christ. The blessings of Abraham are multi-dimensional blessing. They are physical, they are material, they are financial, uh, and they are spiritual blessing. The blessings of Abraham, they are physical, they are material, uh, they are financial, and they are spiritual blessing. So God wants that blessing to be upon you. That's why the Bible says, you know, once you be in Christ Jesus, you become an heir of Abraham. The blessings after the curses came into the world through Adam, 
God released the blessing into the earth through Abraham. So you cannot partake of the blessing that is in Abraham except a person is in Christ Jesus, except you are in Christ. But once you are in Christ, then you uh, you, you you now qualify to partake of the blessing. And God wants you to be blessed. The, the point we took earlier, say God raised up Jesus and sent him to bless you. So Jesus didn't come to condemn you. You know, Jesus came to usher you into the blessing, the blessing of Abraham in Christ Jesus. Glory be to God. I'm sharing with you uh, God's election and the manifesto. If you are just joining me, why God elects you and the divine manifesto, the blessings of God's election. That's what I'm sharing with you. And this is faith talk and miracle moment with Bishop O. Olafe. So I want to, I, I, I want to hear from you. Let me know what this word, how this word has blessed you. Let me know what this word is doing in your life. Glory be to God. This is faith talk and miracle moment. Glory be to God. And I'm going to continue to share this word with you. Glory be to God. Look at it now. Let's take the next point. Oh, the time is flying and I have so much, but not, not to worry. If we can't complete it today, we're going to continue on our next broadcast. But we're still on. Why has God elected you? The election of God and the benefit, the divine manifesto. That's what we're looking at today. Your election of God and the benefit. What is the divine uh, the elect of God and the benefit. So we're looking at the divine manifesto. Glory to God. Why has God uh, elected you? Why did God elect you? Praise God. Amen. Let me know where you're watching from. I think I see my wife, woman of God. God bless you. Thank you for joining me. And if you have not shared this broadcast yet, I want you to share it. Uh, we take the next point. I think this might be uh, the final for today. We're going to continue. Uh, in this teaching, subsequently, by the grace of God, like I said to you, plan to join me every Tuesday, 2.30 p.m. Eastern now and 8.30 p.m. GMT uh, for this Faith Talk and Miracle Moment. And if you have not shared this broadcast, I want you to share it. I want you to bring more people on. So let me take the next point, and that's what we're going to be rounding up for today. I'm going to continue next week. I only spend one hour with you, so let me take the next point. So God elected you, um, glory be to God. So he can use your life for his glory. So he can use your life for his glory. God elected you so he can use your life for his glory. In fact, the Bible says, you didn't choose God. John 15, 16 said, you didn't choose me. He said, but I chose you. That means I elected you. I elected you so that, you know, you can you can become an instrument in his hand. So God chose you to use your life for his glory. He chose you to use your life for his glory. So this is another reason here to use you so that God can use your life. He can use your life to do something great. He can do something great with your life. When, when, you, when, you, when you accept God's election of you, something great will happen in your life. It will happen through your life. He said, you have not chosen me, but I've chosen you that you should go and bring forth fruit so that your life can become productive, so that your life can become fruitful. That's why God elected you, so that your life can become productive, so that your life can become fruitful. So God chose you so that your life can become fruitful and that whatsoever you shall ask, he will give it to you so that every of your desires can be granted, so that your needs can be met. That's why God chose you. Glory be to God. So I, I, I will stop here today, but I'm going to continue. And I've given you so much, you know, to digest. And I don't want to, you know, uh, over, over feed you today with this word, but you can go back and see why God elected you. Watch this broadcast over and over. Let the reality, why is this message important? Why is this good news important? So that you can make your, your election sure. You need to be able to make your election sure so that you can allow God to govern your life. If you know why he chose you or why he elected you, then you will be able to submit to his leadership, his rulership, his governance, so that he can fulfill 
these plans in your life so that you won't you will no longer struggle or resist God's plan because sometimes a whole lot of people are wondering why what what if I if I choose to obey God if I choose to submit to God what's going to happen to me and I've shown you God's intention the divine manifesto is God's intention and that's why God has revealed to you why he has elected you and I want you to go through those uh uh point one after the other again, the reason to see why God elect you so that I can open up your heart and allow him to fulfill his plan for your life. But I want to pray for you today before I go. And I want to pray on this premise on one of the reasons I shared with you why God elect you is so that you can have and enjoy uh, eternal life so that you can have and enjoy eternal life. And I want to pray for you in case you are not born again yet. If you have not given your heart to Jesus, if you have not surrendered to the Lordship of Jesus Christ, if you are not born again, you need to accept Jesus Christ into your heart today to, so that you can become, you can accept or yield yourself as one whom God has chosen, one whom God has elected. You see, God can elect you or choose you, but you also need to respond to him. It's not... He's not going to force himself on you. You know, I think I watched a movie uh, some time ago. People who are ungovernable, you know, God will not force himself. God will, for God always, you know, uh, lead or rule or govern people who submit willingly to him. Yes, that's the nature of God. He's, lo he's looking for people who will submit to his leadership, his rulership over their lives because willingly, not not forcefully, not out of compulsion. That's who God, that's his nature. So, but you can become God's subject by your will. I love what Apostle Paul often writes. He said, Paul, a servant of Christ by his will, he surrender himself to God and God govern his life. But the beauty is that if God is not governing your life, the enemy, the devil who wants to destroy your life will be ruling your life. Among the reasons I shared with you is that God elected you to keep you from uh, being destroyed by the devil so that the devil doesn't destroy your life, destroy your dreams, destroy your goals, destroy your family, destroy your health. So God chose you, but you have to submit to God. You're submitting to God, put God in governance over your life, even though he has elected you. So I want to pray for you today. Maybe you have not, you have never made that decision. You have never, you know, welcomed God into your heart as your Lord and your Savior. You have never surrendered your life to Jesus. You have never accepted Jesus Christ into your heart as your Lord and Savior. Jesus is the gift of God to you. But you want to make that decision today is a very powerful decision. I made this decision many years ago and that's why God is even using my life for his glory. I'm bringing this word to you. I knew I never qualified for this. I, I knew that it was just divine. Uh, it was an election of great grace, I beg your pardon, unmerited favor that 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 is even allowing me to be able to preach this word to you today. And God wants to do the same thing. Like I said to you in one of the uh, points we took, that God elected you so that I can use you for his glory. But the, 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 the key or the starting point is for you to accept the gift of God, Jesus Christ, into your heart as your Lord and Savior. If that is your desire, I want to pray for you right now. And I want you to say this prayer with me and I want you to mean it in your heart. Wherever you are, just say, Lord Jesus, today, I thank you for coming into the world to die for dying for my sin. Say, I ask you to come into my heart from today to be my Lord and my Savior. Say it. Say, I know I'm a sinner, but I ask you to forgive me my sin and to give me a new beginning. Write my name in your book of life. Thank you, Father in heaven, for saving me. Thank you for making me your own child from today. Thank you for making me a member of your family. And I thank you for saving me in the name of Jesus Christ. Glory to God. Yes, I want to congratulate you. If you said that prayer, it means you just got born again. That means you are now a child of God. That means you have accepted God's election in your life, that you have accepted that you are the one that God has chosen to beautify your life, to bring glory into your life, to use your life, you know, for his glory. That's the best decision you could ever make in your life. So 
I want you to, I want to pray for you right now. Father Lord, I pray for this person. Let this truth become the living reality of this one from today in the name of Jesus Christ. Let the power of Satan over the life of this one be broken forever in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, I rejoice with you. If you said that prayer, please let me know you said that prayer. You can email me. Look at my information right there on your screen, info at orphan.org. Or you can inbox me on Facebook or you could text me, text the word love to that number 6789406080. I'm going to send some materials to you that will be a blessing to you. And if you want to be a part of our ministry, wonderful. Let me know because we can reach to you now wherever we, you are. We are ministering to the world. If you can hear me, it means you can be a part of our service. And on our service days on Sunday, on Wednesday, and even when we pray on Friday and Thursday. So let me know you said that prayer. Let me know you gave your heart to the Lord. First and foremost, I will send some materials to you that will be a blessing to you. And if you want to be a part of our ministry, please let me know. If you are in the USA, you are in the Atlanta metro area, we have two powerful locations on Sunday. And we also have our services live on Zoom every time we are on or also on social media, you could go to the, our website, and our website is newly designed, very beautiful there. You could get all the information to be a part of our services. God bless you. Thank you for uh, being a part of this. Before I go today, I want to give you an opportunity to be blessed more by God. The Word of God says, if we have sown unto you uh, spiritual things, we ought also to reap your kind of things. So I want to give you an opportunity to plant your financial seed into the good ground of this ministry i want you to sow when you give today you're going to help me to continue to do to continue to do god's work you know uh god has ordained that they which preach the gospel should live of the gospel and he said if i've ministered to you spiritual things we ought to reap your kind of things i'm a man of god this is all i do and i'm not ashamed of the gospel of christ and i'm happy to do it but once we bring god's word to you you're going to help me you know to continue to do god's work by sowing into the uh into this ministry and god will bless you that is the channel through which god blesses his people the bible says when you give it shall be given unto you good measure pressed down shaking together running over god will cause men to give to your bosom yes it says when you sow bountifully you're going to reap bountifully your future is in your seed so i'm giving you an opportunity today to plant you know your generous financial seed into the good ground of this ministry today for your election of god you can tag you can say this is my seed of god's elect and once you do that you are activating all the benefits of god's elect into your life the blessings of god the glory of god that will manifest in your life the preservation and the perfection and the beauty of God is going to come upon your life. So once you do that, sow the seed. You can sow your seed by going to our website. That's orphan.org, www.orphan.org. Click the give button. Follow the prompt. And there are many options. You can give by Cash App. You can give by Zelle. Anywhere you are in the world is an acceptable platform. So go and give your offering and watch God bless you. Once again, let me pray for everyone that's going to be giving today. Father Lord, I pray for your children right now. And as this person is making a decision right now to give into, the, into your work, I pray that your blessing will locate this person. I pray that you perfect that which concerns this one in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray that you will open this one up, open the windows of heaven and release your blessing into the life of this person that there will not be room enough to receive it. I thank you, Father. I give you praise for doing it. And I call it done in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' mighty name. God will bless you as you give. And if you have any uh, need or any prayer request in your life, let me know. Like I said, you can email me. I can pray with you. You can, you can inbox me privately or you can email me or you can text me. Look at the number. Look at the information scrolling on, the, uh, on your screen right now. You can use that information to reach me. Email me, glory be to God. Text me, let me know that, you know, what you want God to do for you. Let me leave the one that will help you to sow, still flashing on the screen. So let me know, you know, uh, what you want God to do in your life. And I'm going to pray with you and I'm going to pray for you. But I pray today that miracles are released into your life, that the blessings of God flow into your life from this moment in the mighty name of Jesus. Be blessed of God. Be blessed in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. We give you praise. All right. 
I got to sign out right now. Um, this is Bishop O. Olafe with Faith Talk and Miracle Moment. I look forward to seeing you again next time. Please share this broadcast so that many more people can be blessed, many more people can watch it. Until I come your way again next time, I want you to know that Jesus loves you, and so do I. Shalom. God bless you.